And now it is with great honor that I bring to the stage our keynote speaker for the night. David George Brooks, Fat Gratitude Guy, has been a speaker, coach, and best-selling author for over 25 years. He is a former Nordstrom store manager and has managed a corporate role for over 30 years. His published works include The Brooker's Daily Gratitude Journal, Happiness Starts with Gratitude, and a number of other books on gratitude. As a result of his passion for gratitude, he has presented over 475 speeches and workshops in the past five years. With over 850 gratitude videos posted on YouTube, thousands have seen his message, and he is now considered a leading authority on how living a life of gratitude can enhance and improve your life. He resides in Seattle, Washington. Thank you, Maggie. About 20 years ago, I lost my wife to a prescription pill overdose and I'd lost a lot of other people including my mother and father when I was younger and at some point I thought to myself I'm gonna have to figure out a way to cope and deal with some of the losses that I had and get an effective way to continue to manage my life without being depressed or down or full of anxiety or loss of hope but along the way I decided one of the biggest things for me is it kind of depends on how you look at things now you've heard of the glass half full and half empty but let me give you another example of how you look at something if everybody would stand up please and what I'd like you to do when you stand up take your right arm and extend it skyward and start turning it in a clockwise manner now I will tell you there's a clock in the back when I'm in the junior high schools I have to go like this nobody seems to know what clockwise is but you got you guys can extend it higher than that get a little good stretch after that good book of the Beppo now start bringing it slowly down forehead eyes chin chest waist what direction is it going now Bueller anybody anybody what direction is it going now counterclockwise thank you okay you can sit down so why is that I guess it all depends on how you look at something you can look at it clockwise you can look at it counterclockwise it never changes direction but we look at it from above and below and that gives it a different view but it's your choice happiness is a choice up and down is a choice left right black red it doesn't matter what it is it's a choice we have you can make a choice to be happy in this world and you can be make a choice to get gratitude in your life too one of the things that I realized along the way is I needed something that was going to help me as I mentioned and I realized that if you get gratitude if you focus on what you have versus what you don't have your entire world is going to work better and I'm going to give you a little example of how gratitude can work in the center of your table is a three by five card grab that card if you will and you need a card and you need a pen you're also going to need a partner so if you've got an even number number of people at your table get somebody to partner up with and get a pen and get that three by five card so there might be somebody this is everybody got, who doesn't have a partner and it's two people not three anybody need to move how about you guys over there somebody need a partner there's five of you there so who doesn't have a partner over there <laughs> okay <laughs> that's fine anyway it doesn't we, you I'm happy to come over and be your partner so but whatever you have you gotta have partner up with one other person okay upper left hand corner here's what I want you to write I want you to write you are y-o-u-a-r-e you are in the upper left hand corner of that card in the upper right hand corner write your partner's name and if you don't know them introduce yourself okay and lastly in the lower right hand corner sign your name everybody got it you are upper left hand corner partner's name upper right your signature in the lower right hand corner I'm gonna give you 60 seconds and here's what I want you to do 
I want you to write as many things as you can in 60 seconds as fast as you can to describe your partner you are energetic you are smart you are bright however you see them write as many things as you can 60 seconds go Okay, and stop. Now I'm going to give you another 60 seconds. Take about 30 seconds each and read to each other what you wrote about each other. Go. Okay, and stop. Now, take that card and exchange cards so you have the one that was written about you. And even though you just heard your partner read and describe you with all those words, I'd like you to take a look at those words again and see them visually as well as just having heard them and plant them in your brain. As you're reading all those words, that your partner wrote about you to describe you by a show of hands how many people might hold on to that card it's almost always thank you it's almost always about 90 percent that is a 60 or 120 second exercise on helping you to see what gratitude will do for you why is it somebody else sees us in such a better light than we see ourselves I don't understand it there was a word I took out of my vocabulary years ago. I won't even say the word. I'll spell it. It was L-O-S-E-R. And I would describe myself that way sometimes. I thought, what is wrong with you? If you can't advocate for yourself, well, when you get gratitude and you're focusing every single day on what you have in your life, focusing on the good things and not the negative stuff, gratitude turns what you have into enough Things like that will keep you in a much better frame of mind and a gratitude or an attitude of gratitude, if you will. So I talk very briefly about embracing gratitude. Next, I talk about it takes as long as it takes. Don't ever give up. Never, ever, ever, ever give up was Winston Churchill. I was telling Lydia earlier that I wanted to be a speaker when I was 19 years old. I started about seven years ago after a long career at Nordstrom and Lowe's Home Improvement, running these big stores. 47 years till I finally got the guts to follow my own dream and become a speaker. So it doesn't matter. You've got Colonel Sanders, Ray Kroc, Lee McDonald's, Mary Kay Ash. You have all these people that were in their 50s and 60s in some cases that started businesses. So you guys and gals are just starting out. So your whole life's in front of you. But if it gives you a curve and it gives you a, a different bit of a up and down roller coaster effect, don't ever give up. On where you want to go because you'll get there sometimes it just takes time when Dana had passed away my wife Connor was four years old my younger son my older son was 14 so I decided one day when 
Connor was about 17 and I was going to become a speaker. And I was working at Lowe's at the time and I come home, it's about 2 in the afternoon. Connor looks up at me and he goes, what are you doing home? And I said, I quit. And he goes, you quit Lowe's? I went, yeah. You quit being a store manager? And I went, yeah. And he looks up at me and he says, what are you going to do now? I said, well, I'm going to be a speaker. And he looks up from the couch and he goes, well, that's just super dad. I have a question for you. What are we going to do for food? It was a decent question. But you know what? When you believe in something more than anything, it can happen. Now I'm very, very busy and I get to do a lot of talks all around the country. It's thrilling to me. But you've also got to remember that you want to clean out your brain and get rid of the junk. How are you going to let gratitude into your life, into your life if you're filled with junk and negative type thinking? Well, one of the things that I really push for is a gratitude journal. I have a gratitude journal that I sell and people buy them, but I tell people, you know what, even if you get a spiral notebook, that's fine. Whatever it takes, something to focus on what you're grateful for every single day. It takes five minutes to write in a gratitude journal to focus on that handful of things and it'll keep you so focused and so centered on everything in your life that you have as I mentioned. We have an opioid crisis, military suicides, homelessness, we have all these things. There's a lot of negativity in the world. I'll guarantee you everybody, nobody here, but I'll bet you everybody in this room knows somebody that you go talk to them and they're going to be negative about something. But remember it's a choice. It's a choice to be up or down or left or right, as I said. So a gratitude journal. What does a gratitude journal do for you? This has a little, and I understand the age of what I'm talking to here. Not a lot of people write anymore. In fact, when I talk about a gratitude journal, they yell from the audience, do you have an app? I'm like, well, I actually do have an app. And you just talk to it and it just writes it and types it in. But it's just not quite the same. There's a little saying in the upper left-hand corner of this gratitude journal that says, if you think about it, it's like a dream. If you talk about it, it inspires you. But if you write about it, it empowers you. Regardless of what's happened with keyboards and everything else, when you write something, it plants it better in your brain. And in this gratitude journal, you open it up, it has a day and a date, a little place for current events and special occasions. And there's a place for a daily number, which we'll get to in a second, four or five lines on what you're grateful for and maybe the highlight of your day and then what you're going to be grateful for tomorrow. It's all very structured to have it be the same every single day so it plants it, as I say, in your brain that much better. So everybody said they were going to keep that card. At least almost everybody did. So flip that card over. We're going to do another little exercise. Now this one, you don't need a partner. In fact, this exercise you're not even going to share with anybody, so don't worry about what you're going to write down. This is a personal exercise. What I'd like you to do is I want you to start with your daily number. This is what your daily number is. 10 is the best day of your life or potentially the best day of life and 1 is not a very good day. So whatever your number is right now, kind of take your temperature, put that in the upper left hand corner and put a circle around it. You can do halves too. Six and a half, seven and a half, eight and a half. Whatever you feel, and don't show this to anybody. This is just for you. Upper left hand corner and put a circle around it. Next, on the middle of that card, or to the left of the card rather, I want you to write three numbers. One, two, three. Number at one, two, three on the left hand side. Number one, if you could only pick one thing in your life that you're the most grateful for, write that down at number one. Number two, what is the second thing you're most grateful for? Write that down at number two. And last thing, number three, this might take thinking about it a second. 
What was the highlight of your day today or yesterday? What was the best thing that happened to you either earlier today or yesterday? Write that down at number three. Okay, it looks like most people have that down. Here's what I'd like you to do. I want you to, again, this is just for you. I want you to silently read number one, number two, and number three again. And then I want you to write a number in the upper right-hand corner to reflect your daily number. Could be the same number, could be different. But read one, two, and three again, and then write that number in the upper right-hand corner after reading those three things and circle it. Okay, by show of hands, how many people's number from the left-hand corner to the upper right-hand corner stayed the same? Okay. How many people's number went up? Well, about two-thirds. That's pretty much what it always is, about a third, two-thirds. That is, again, a 60-second example of what focusing on gratitude will do for you. If that can shift that many people's mindset, imagine what taking four or five minutes in the gratitude journal every day can do for you. That's how powerful it is. And again, it comes back to attitude. John Lennon from the Beatles was, I don't know, in fourth or fifth grade, something like that, and they're, they're going around the room and they're talking about what do they want to be when they grow up. And the teacher points to John Lennon and says, what do you want to be when you grow up? And he says, happy. And the teacher looks at John Lennon and says, you don't get the assignment. And John Lennon looks at the teacher and goes, you don't get life. I think people really are at least seeking happiness. One of the books I've done is called Happiness Starts with Gratitude. I don't know if it's really possible to be happy without truly being grateful. Somebody said the only reason we desire something is because we think we can find happiness outside of ourselves when really it's inside. Gratitude, a gratitude journal, a gra attitude of gratitude, any of those things will make such a difference. I will tell you that I had a mother that was manic depressive, bipolar. And I got some of that from her and I had to battle it by doing gratitude journals and exercise and water and the right food, and getting sleep and hanging out with the right kind of people. But now that you understand how I do a daily number, I woke up one day and I was a two. And I was so depressed, I just couldn't even think straight. And I had a talk to do that day. So I thought, well, Mr. Gratitude Guy, you better practice what you preach. So I took my journal and went to Starbucks and wrote in my journal and I got to maybe a four or five. Just the same impact that had on some of you here, how that changed. Then I went up to a town about 100 miles north of Seattle he did a talk and afterwards I was over at the book table and this gal comes up and she's crying and she goes, you just changed my life. I think I mentioned this to Tyler and Maggie. I've started to hear that a lot more over the, all the years, but that's the first time I'd ever heard it when I first got it, started speaking. And then she gave me a hug and she said, I need a couple of journals because my sons are having a difficult time and this will help them to focus and so forth and keep them on the positive side. So I gave her a hug and signed the journals and off I went. By the way, let me just mention something too. It's always important to keep your head in check. I was at a, at a similar meeting about a week earlier and we drew cards to get whoever gets a book from the gratitude guy. And so I pull out the name Lydia Smith, or whatever her last name is. Whoever the person was and they all cheer. She comes up front and I hand her a book and it's about 200 people in the room. 
And as she's walking away, I said, you know, if you'd like later, I'll sign that for you. And she looks back, she goes, that's okay. <laughs> you guys don't get that? She didn't want it signed. Thank you for that courtesy laugh. That's why I'll never get too carried away, just trying to make a difference. Anyway, when I walked out to my car and got in my car to drive back to Seattle, I was a nine, nine and a half. All I had done is written in a gratitude journal and made an impact in somebody's life. So that's again how cool gratitude can be. How many people have their smartphones here? Okay, take out your smartphones if you would. Has anybody been on it, by the way, since I've been talking? I don't think so. This is a great group. You always look over and you see people. Take out your smartphones. We're going to use them again in a second, but I want to just sort of pull the audience, if I could. If you could text me to this number, 206 371 8309. 206 371 8309. And just text me what the number one thing is you're grateful for. It's always fun for me to see the different varieties of what people are grateful for. So I would appreciate that. All right, while you're doing that, thank you for doing that. Another thing I think is so important, I think at some point the most relation, important relationship you have in your life is the one you have with you. And I think when you find that connection and you really like, hopefully even love that person you see in the mirror, finding yourself is the first step to finding your passion and finding your purpose. And I think once you find yourself, you find your passion, you'll probably figure out what you're intending to do. I could overhear a lot of conversations around here tonight. There's some pretty powerful directions that you young folks are going in, which is very, very cool. But we want to figure out what that is. And so that relationship we have with ourselves is very important. And I'll tell you, I have just a basic $20 bill here. Now, if I just went out in the audience and just gave this to anybody, just gave it to you, how many people would just take it? Great, thank you. About two thirds. There's the other third I always wonder about. Well, there must be a catch. No, there's no catch. So if I look at this and I say, that's Andrew Jackson. And I crunched up like this, how many people would still take it? Yep, thank you. If I do this, stomp on it, Smooth it out. How many people would still take it? You guys are a great audience. Thank you. <laughs> if I look at Andrew Jackson and I say, you are a piece of crap. You are worthless. In fact, you don't even deserve to be on this planet. You know what Andrew Jackson would say? He'd look at me and he'd say, well, listen, Mr. Speaker Man. You can say whatever you want, but I'm still worth 20 bucks. And he would be right. So my question to you is, it's rhetorical. Don't ever let anybody crush you, step on you, tell you you're full of crap or worthless or don't belong to be here, or maybe worse of all, devalue you from 20 to 15 to 10 to five to zero. It's happened to me before, I hope it hasn't to you. But don't ever let anybody do that. That's how you continue that relationship when you have with yourself. And when you embrace gratitude and you get an attitude of gratitude, it'll make such a big difference in how you see that person in the mirror. And I think too, a term I love is reverse engineer. Reverse engineer your life and become happy now. How many people say, if I just got that car, I'll be happy. If I just had this, I just had that, I'll be happy. It doesn't work that way. It starts on the inside. And one of the best ways to do that is gratitude. And again, I think this relationship that we have with ourselves is so important. I went to Las Vegas some years ago with a friend of mine.